Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 10th April 2024. So here we are going to take PDF of Hindu and we are going to pick out the important articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. And after picking out of articles, we are going to see like how many dimensions you can think about that topic. And apart from that, we are also going to see like how can we connect one topic with different subjects. So all these are very very important things in your preparation. So if you are not preparing in this way, then you will be in out of game. You will be not in the game because UPSC is searching for the students who are having multi-dimensional approach and who are writing an answer in multi-dimensional way and even to uh, who are writing essay in a multi-dimensional way. So they are getting good marks. Okay, try to write your answers and essay as much multi-dimensional as possible. So for writing that kind of questions and answers and to write that kind of essays, yes, you need to need this type of approach for sure. So now this let us see the front page. So this is front page of your Hindu and I am taking your Delhi edition. So whichever edition you are having, you can take that. There will be no problem with the edition at all. And in this first page, I found nothing which is important from our examination point of view. So let us move on to other pages. So in the city page also, I found nothing. And you can move on to the states page. In the states page is also most of the articles are political articles. So don't read these political articles and waste your time. Okay, because they will fetch you nothing. And if you move on to this other page here, you can see one article. So this article is talking that Rail Seema in grip of severe heat wave. So we are not at all uh, seeing like which region, but here the key word you have to focus is heat wave. So let us see the dimensions. So before seeing dimensions, I want to let you know like we in Rathod's IES, we are mainly coming up with offline foundation batch for GS. Prelims come foundation, prelims and mains foundation. So if you see some important features of this course, we are going to cover your 100% syllabus. And next one is we are going to focus on PYQs of UPSC examinations. And we are going to have mains answer writing practice on day one of your preparation and next we are going to provide you the detailed schedule and based on this detailed schedules you will be having prelims test and as well as mains test and you will be having one to one mentorship you will be having one to one mentorship on every Sunday and apart from that so there will be like 50 percentage of refund policy. So why? If you are at least not clear, if you are not clear at least your prelims, then there is 50 percentage of refund that you are going to give. So why we are came up with this? Because we are having that much confidence that so with our classes, with our guidance, with our schedule, you are going to clear prelims for sure. And if you clear prelims and we are going to have this main series and as well as main answer and practice from the day one so that you will be improving in the mains and there is high chance of clearing this examination. And one more thing here is so daily you will be having four hours of offline classes and till evening you have to sit in this institute and we are providing the study space and you have to sit there and you have to study for an entire day. Okay, so that is a timetable of this offline G, uh, GS prelims come mains foundation codes okay so very few seats are left so there are just 70 students in a batch and there are very few seats are remaining so if you want to have the seat for that you can contact us on this number 8074765513 so even that is whatsapp number you can text me on whatsapp also clear 
and now let us see the dimensions so this article is talking about heat wave so you have to see like present context so across our country we are seeing heat wave so in this context you have to know like what is this heat wave and what is a criteria you have to see what is a criteria and what is the temperature in the hilly regions and in plains so how it is different plains and hilly regions and you have to see like what all the measures can be taken you have to see like what all the measures can be taken and you have to see what are this imd guidelines you have to see what are the imd guidelines and you have to see like what are the reasons so one important reason that we can say is due to climate change because of climate change because of global warming so all these things are very important and you have to see this topic from gs paper 1 under geography and you have to see this topic from gs paper 3 under environment and ecology so these two subjects are very important from this article point of view and now let us see the detailed notes of this topic So if you see the context why it is in use so even as a heat wave of unprecedented scale is sweeping in our in andhra pradesh so atil ralsi it is from andhra pradesh so what happened so in this region there is increasing of heat there is heat wave and even we are seeing that there is water scarcity so there is increased water scarcity and even there is increasing of heat or temperature so that appears to be the worst thing and apart from this even you are facing the issue of water crisis okay so these two problems are seen in this state of andhra pradesh especially in this trial sima region so if you see the details it says that with the mercury level is hovering that means so the level of temperature the temperature rise which is happening and now the temperature is recording around 43 degrees it is around 43 degrees centigrade in the first week of april the residents are already scared of what may will feel like like now we are in april only so in this april so there is increasing of temperature is happening and normally we can see like temperature will be very high in the month of may and the people they are having fear about this how this may month gonna be and what is the meaning of this heat waves so heat waves they are prolonged periods of excessively hot weather okay they are prolonged periods of excessively hot weather and this heat wave that can cause adverse impact on human health so this is causing impact on human health environment and as well as economy of that country and india being it is a tropical country and it is particularly vulnerable to heat waves which have become more frequent and intense so what happens so there is increasing of heat waves so heat wave is becoming very frequent and as less well very intense in these recent years and if you are talking about what is the criteria for declaring a heat wave so it is different for hilly areas and it is different for the plain areas so heat wave it is considered as maximum temperature of uh, around 40 degrees or more for plain areas so the plain areas whenever the temperature is like 40 degrees or more than 40 degrees we can call it as heat waves and for hilly regions it is like 
at least 30 degrees or more than 30 degrees we can consider it as heat wave in that hilly regions so i want to show you this infographic i hope you can see this right so in plains 40 degrees or more than 40 degrees is considered as heat wave and hilly region it is at least 30 degrees or more than 30 degrees is called as heat wave so heat wave conditions they will prevail when what happened temperature is above 40 degrees and whenever there is more like 4 to 5 degrees more okay and next one here is severe heat wave conditions is 40 degrees or 6 degrees more okay 40 degrees or 7 degrees more clear and if you are talking about what are the initiatives taken by IMD to combat these heat waves so this 5 to 6 points are very important from your mains so you have to see like what are the initiatives of this IMD to combat heat waves? So first of all is timely issuance of heat wave forecast to keep the public informed. Okay, first it should give the warnings. So if IMD is not giving the warnings, how people know about the temperature? So people will not be using thermometers in home to record the temperature, right? So they need some organization that need to release the alerts. So that will be done by this IMD. And warnings you are provided to disaster management authorities also to have like necessary preparedness before something is going to happen. And next one is IMD also offers seasonal outlook and extended range forecast offering additional insights into the temperature trends. Okay. So IMD also offers seasonal outlook and also extended range forecast. And this one is daily forecast for the next 5 days with real time updates. So how the temperature will be for next 5 days. That temperature updates will also be given by this IMD. So that people and authorities they will be prepared. And this one is IMD will also give like color coded warnings for severe weather events. Even including heat waves. And this one is the cooperation with National Disaster Management Authority that is NMDA and local health departments for heat action plans so even imda which is having proper cooperation with this national disaster management authority and as well as local health departments for heat action plans and this one is here there will be also implementation of plans in vulnerable region so that it can minimize the heat related risk so these are the some important steps which are taken by the imd to control heat waves okay so this is this first article and now let us see the next article so let us move on to editorial page directly so in this editorial page there are many articles which are important so first one here is the climate crisis is not gender neutral okay, it is not gender neutral why so we have to see this article it is very important so it is talking about climate change and gender neutrality okay climate change and gender neutrality so this article is important from gs paper 3 under environment and ecology because here we are talking about climate change and gender neutrality so climate change is one of the important aspect of this environment and ecology so here you have to see like what are the causes of climate change and which are the substances which are causing climate change and what is this global warming and you have to see what are this greenhouse gases and greenhouse effect and not only this you have to see like what is the impact of this global warming so all these are very important and next here you have to see like why this climate change is not gender neutral so if you are talking about gender we have females and males but because of this climate change more impact is seen on females 
okay more impact on this females compared to that of males so here you have to see what is the impact and you have to see like what are the reasons for increased impact on women and you have to see what is the outcome and you have to collect some examples to substantiate that climate change is not gender neutral and you have to see one more dimension like what or the measures can be taken now and what is a way forward okay so these all are important dimensions that you have to see from this article so now let us see this article in detail so before that let us see there is also one more important article here that is a distinct right right to be free of climate change effects come amid a conservation dilemma so this article is talking about recent supreme court judgment and supreme court judge, uh, judgment said that here right to free from climate change is a fundamental right okay and you have to see this article in a very great detail and there is a high chance of getting question in your prelims and mains so this article is talking about supreme court judgment it is a right to prevent climate change so here what are the dimensions first let us see the subjects this topic is important from gs paper to under polity because it is regarding this supreme court judgment and as well as in that judgment they also said about some important constitutional provisions for example article 14 and as well as article 21 and next you have to see like what is a petition about and you have to see name of the case name of judgment or case you have to see like what is the final verdict you have to see like what is the final verdict and next one is what is the impact of that verdict so all these are very very important okay and these are the dimensions that you have to see and this article is also important from gs paper 3 under science and technology and as well as gs paper 3 under environment and ecology because from science and technology point of view we have to see like how can we improve science and technology or developments to control this climate change so from that point of view science and technology is also very important okay so we are going to see these two articles together so first one it is about distinct right it is talking about free of climate change effects and as of this case which had been a uh, file regarding conservation of great indian bustard animals okay so from that point of view you have to see even some important facts relevant from this great indian bustard as well and if you see here supreme court ruling has come in the case which is connected with the survival of endangered indian bustard great indian bustard species so this judgment is given by supreme court while during this case it is about conservation of this great indian bustard species and if you see the details of judgment so supreme court said that right against climate change okay right against climate change it is a fundamental right because everyone wants healthy environment right so right to a healthy environment which is safe from ill effects of climate change it is a fundamental right and next if you see the second important point that is expansive view of fundamental rights under article 14 and article 21 supreme court held that 
right to life under article 21 and right to equality that is under article 14 that could not be fully realized without a clean stable environment so here this right against climate change it is an integral part of article 21 and article 14 okay supreme court has expanded the scope of article 14 and article 21 to underline the need to protect lives okay it is focusing on protecting of lives and livelihoods in the face of climate change and next third important point in this judgment is the impact of right to life or right to health which talks about this article 21 due to climate change so right to health it is an integral part of article 21 which is going to be impacted because of different factors like air pollution vector borne diseases rising temperature droughts and these factors they are exaggerated due to climate change and fourth important point in this supreme court judgment is impact on right to equality so article 14 due to climate change and environmental degradation that leads to acute food and water shortages in a particular area where the poorer communities they suffer more than the richer ones and this one is forest dwellers tribals and indigenous communities they have very high risk because because of this climate change they will be also at the verge of losing of homes losing of culture right so these people like forest dwellers tribals and indigenous communities they are at higher risk and this one is interconnection between climate change and human rights supreme court in its judgment which has said that climate change impacts various human rights for example they will be impacting right to health and indigenous rights gender equality and as well as right to development so all these will be affected and what is the significance of this judgment and this significance part is very important from your means so if you see the significance the reiteration of india's commitment to climate justice the yes, supreme court is uh, it is ruling that it reiterates india's climate responsibilities under international laws and even we we had some agreements like uh, paris climate deal right to provide environmental and climate justice so in this concern this judgment is very important and it's one nice so this judgment also makes the issue of climate change so the issue of this climate change it is a part of public disclosure so the recognition of right which is against climate change as a fundamental right so even it makes the issue of climate change which is a part of public and political disclosure in the country and even it will nudge the parliament to enact legislations on the issues of climate change so because of all these things yes it is very very important and next one is it also even opens the doors of constitution courts okay so even it is opening the doors for the constitutional courts and for environmental jurisprudence the recognition of the right against the climate change which is like a fundamental right and even it is opens the doors of the constitutional courts for citizens to legitimate climate change issues in the future so here it is also open the doors for this constitutional courts for environmental jurisprudence that means we are dealing with this environment related things even the judiciary so this is the one important significance and this one is it is like a progressive step in setting a significant legal precedent that is in the absence of a single or umbrella legislation against climate change in the country and the recognition of the rights of indians against climate change by the judiciary and because of this we can say like it is a progressive step it is a progressive step setting a significant legal precedent and as well as it also recognizes the vulnerability of indians to climate change so here the supreme court ruling it is a recognition of vulnerability of indians to climate change 
so which has been highlighted by the several studies even in ipccc reports also had been said so this is about the judgment and about the significance of this judgment and this topic is at most important for your prelims and as well as for your mains okay keep this in your mind and now let us see this topic regarding climate crisis and gender neutrality so here if you see author says that climate crisis is already here and is not impact everyone equally because some people okay not some people so if you see our country so we have rich and poor and we have different communities different caste people and the people who are living in different uh, regions and in our country we have the population consists of both men and women right so here each and every every community or every person per se so they will be having the different impact of this climate change so especially women and girls they experience disproportionately very high health risk especially because of the situations like poverty and because of existing roles because of responsibility and because of culture norms and the climate crisis is already here and does not impact everyone equally and women and girls they experience disproportionately high health risk okay that is the thing which mainly said so even if you see the data which is given by UNDP that is United Nation Development Program it says that women and children they are 14 times it says that women and children they are 14 times more likely than men to die in a disaster in a, in a disaster here more than 14, 14 times you are going to die and even supreme court of india just ruled that people they have the right to free from adverse events of climate change and people they have right to clean environment it already had been recognized as a fundamental right within ambit of right to life and personal liberty which comes under article 21 of our indian constitution and this one is agriculture is one of the most important livelihood source of women in india especially if you go to these rural areas and especially climate driven crop yield reduction which is happening that means because of climate change there is decreasing of productivity so whenever there is decreasing of productivity then we can also see there will be increasing of food insecurity that will be having adverse impact on poor households okay because already women and girls have faces nutritional deficiencies and this one is within a small and marginal land holdings households so they are facing like social stigma they are facing social stigma due to unpaid loans and women experience higher domestic work burdens and worse health and greater intimate partner violence so these are some important issues you are facing by the women and even national family health survey four and five they came up with the data and the data which shows that women living in drought prone districts they were underweight and even they are experienced more intimate partner violence and they had high prevalence of girl marriages oh, that is nothing but child marriages and for women the increasing of food and nutrition insecurity is happening and on other side there is increasing of work burden and income uncertainties that lead not only to poor physical health but even their mental health is also going to be impact and even emotional well-being of the people and if you see there are some extreme events and then gender based violence is happening so recently the data is released by national family health survey of five so which mainly showed that over half of women over half of women and children they are living in these districts they were at risk and studies they are increasingly showing a direct correlation between these natural disasters and gender based violence against women okay so because of this data which is released and says that yes natural disasters also have the relationship between like gender based violence as well and also extreme weather events and subsequent changes in the water cycle patterns they are also having like severe impact on access to safe drinking water and even that is going to increase drudgery and reduces the time
for productive work and health care of women and girls. And there is also prolonged heat. So because of this prolonged heat, even who are the pregnant women, so those pregnant women, they also have the high risk of preterm births. And as well as eclampsia, eclampsia means nothing but there is increasing of blood pressure, especially in the arteries and veins which are connected to this uterus. And also young children and as well as elderly also having some impact. And especially here you can see like pollutants. Okay, whenever uh, they are going for exposure to these pollutants in the air, for example, it may be like household or outdoor, it affects women's health, causing respiratory and cardiovascular diseases. And especially for unborn child, unborn fetus also, they will be having lots of lots of impact on the physical and cognitive growth. And one of the most worrying aspects of air pollution, it is having impact on the growing brain. So brain will be not go growing, especially in the young children, whenever they are coming with the lots and lots of pollution. And this one is climate change action, which requires 100% of pollution if we want to achieve the Paris Agreement goal of limiting global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees centigrade. So here climate action. So what is the need? The need here is we have to take urgent steps to control this climate change. At the same time, we have to empower women like we can come up with a better climate solutions and we have to give them access to the resources as men and women increase their agricultural yields by 20 to 30 percentage. So here we have to give their own rights. And this one is a gender lens need to be applied to all state action plans on climate change. And this one is we have to focus on national action plan on climate change and state action plan on climate change. And we have to highlight what are the impacts which are faced by women. Okay, especially victims and missing deeper gender dynamics. So in this way, we have to work so that we have to make this climate change to be gender neutral. Clear and now let us move on to another article. So there is another article in this editorial page. It is about gross mismanagement. India is falling behind in efforts to control tuberculosis. So this article is talking about tuberculosis control program in India. But this article is saying that we are falling behind. So less than two years left to achieve ambitious goal. It is said by our Prime Minister in 2018 that is to eliminate TB in India. Okay, to eliminate TB in India. The pharmacy of Global South is once again struggling to treat patients with drug sensitive TB. That means you are having multi drug resistance TB cases are very very high. So because of this long term treatment of this uh, TB, so here TB causing organisms are developing resistance against the drug and they are not they are not sensitive to the drugs. So this is one cause of concern here. So there is also some other problems like disruptions of drug supply and we even you can see like drug sensitive medicines in 2022 had been decreased and next one is we are also facing like st uh, shortage of MDR drug that is Delamamine, okay Delamanid and even there is other problem like delay in diagnosis and as well as treatment of this TB and actually patients who already started they are leaving in middle so it is also one important reason okay so because of all these problems yes we are not going to achieve this target of eliminating TB in India and here you have to see one program that is national TB elimination program so here I want to give you one homework so please do research regarding what is this national TB elimination program and please let me know some facts regarding this okay and now let us move on to opinion page so this is talking about critical okay we are not much bothered about this and you can move on to this text and context page so in this text and context i found one article which is relevant that is the import or oh, import restrictions on solar pv cells so actually our government wants to promote domestic production of this photovoltaic cell. So because of this here, there is some import restrictions which is kept by the government. 
okay so actually if you see the story so far it says that recent government's orders on attempts to increase local sourcing of solar modules so we want to increase the local production and to support india's renewable manufacturing ecosystem okay so that here ministry of new and renewable energy imposed restrictions on this import of solar photovoltaic cells so now the, let us see this topic in detail so this article is talking about import restrictions so first it is talking about import restrictions and the second area it is talking about solar photovoltaic cells so these are the topics that are important from environment and ecology science and technology and as well as economy point of view so if you see in trade we have two components what are they we have exports and we have imports so exports means from one country they are sending to another country import means they are getting from another countries correct so here in this country also we have domestic manufacturing units so how government can provide support to that domestic manufacturing like we have to decrease imports so how can we decrease imports so government have to impose restrictions on this imports so this is called as import restriction and government want to increase production in india with that is atmanirbhar bharat okay and next one is photovoltaic cells so from science and technology point of view you have to see what is this photovoltaic cells and what is the mechanism and you have to see like what are the applications you have to see like what are the applications so what is the mechanism and what is this photovoltaic cells and this topic is important from gs paper 3 under environment and ecology and it's from science and technology and even from economy point of view they are very important okay clear let us see this topic in detail so if you see the context why it is in news india is overwhelmingly import dependent to meet its demand for solar cells and modules so actually there is increased demand for this china especially from the solar cells and solar modules and even vietnam they are the country's major suppliers so for india so we are getting the uh, imports related to the solar energy that is from china and vietnam so if you see the details it says that so government is taking some measures like production linked incentive scheme and domestic in india's domestic sector which has boosted its production capacities and even government is came up with a better better price competitiveness to meet the local demand and apart from that here the government's ambitious target it is it is to generate around 500 gigawatts of installed capacity from non fossil fuels by 2030 it is the main driver to scale solar power in india so actually we have to improve the solar power because we have an ambitious target of climate or like carbon neutrality by 2070 and you also accounts for the fastest rate of growth for demand of electricity because of increasing of temperature increasing of heat wave so because of this yes we are focusing on improving of production of this photovoltaic cells and next topic it is about center orders recall of 5000 capf true from manipur so i think you know about what is happening in manipur the issue between meetings and cookies so because of communal violence our government in uh, our government came up with this 5000 crpf troops in this manipur and now somewhat the issue had been resolved so we are coming up with recalling of them so here you have to know about what is this capf that's it and this topic is important from internal security point of view which comes in the gs paper 3 
and if you see the context it says that the union ministry of home affairs it says that union ministry of home affairs has ordered withdrawal of around 5000 central armed police forces okay they are from manipur so if you see the details it says that because of this ethnic violence erupted between the smithies and cookies on may 3 2023 after the once the violence erupted so around 36000 personnel they are from indian army and capf they have been deployed in the state so who are the capf that is central armored police forces that is central armored police forces so this capf which refers to seven security forces in india which comes to the authority of ministry of home affairs so we have assam rifles border security force central industrial security force central reserve police force and indo tibetan border police and national security guard and shashastra seema bal so these were the examples of this CAPF and these are the very important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper and now let us hunt for other important articles. So you can directly move on to this news page and in this news page also most of the articles are political articles and leave this elections page it is not at all important. And here you can see like two important articles. So what is this? First one is states UTs asked to submit data on health stroke, heat stroke cases. So actually here what happened? Heat wave is happening. So because of this heat stroke will be common. And now here, here we have to give this data of heat stroke. Why? Because this year we have elections and election campaigns are going on. So, award election campaigns related activities which are between noon and 3 pm. Okay, so we, there should be no overcrowding. And because of this heat stroke, so this is the thing which mainly said by National Center for Disease Control. Okay, here you have to see what is this heat stroke and what can be done or the what or the preventive measures can be taken. So, actually, what happens here is the symptoms of this. Uh, uh, heat stroke will be like allergies, dehydration, dizziness, headache, excessive thirst, dryness of mouth, decrease in urine output and as well as fainting. So these are the some important symptoms of this heat stroke. And next topic here is India likely to record normal monsoon this year. This is according to SkyMet. So, India is likely to experience a normal monsoon this year. It is said by private weather forecasting agency SkyMet. Okay, and we are also going to have the more rainfall in the second half of this season. And this year we have Elino and everything had been changed. And now next year we are going to have the good monsoon. So, this is the one prediction. We have to wait and see like how it is going to impact Indian agriculture, economy, and well environment. So, if you are talking about this monsoon, we have two important concepts. So, first one is like El Nino and next one is La Nina. Okay, we have El Nino and La Nina. So, El Nino is bad and La Nina is good and next year we are going to have this La Nina. So, it is according to this sky met. And now, let us move on to the next topic. I discussed about this CAPF. And you can move on to this business page and there is nothing much important in our today's business session and even the world page also most of the articles are like old articles only. So these are the very important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper and now I want to show you exactly where can you get the notes of this class. So here this is our Rathod's IAS classes telegram channel. So do join this channel because we are posting this uh, notes and updates of the classes in this YouTube, uh, in this uh, Telegram channel. So you can join this so that you will be getting alerts. And next one here is you already know that we had launched this online foundation course. And if you can't take this offline foundation course, you can take this online foundation course. 
an online foundation course cost is around 19500 rupees with the validity of 2 years and you will be having like both recorded and live classes there so live classes is there for weekly 4 days and that live classes it is for your enrichment like current affairs updates and main translating updates and as well as prelims classes updates before your prelims okay and most of the static portion you will be getting recorded videos and those are updated videos with current affairs okay so if you want to take any course in Rathod's IS if you have any queries you can call us on this number 8074765513 and even this is whatsapp number you can text me on whatsapp as well okay and finally this is our Rathod's IS Academy YouTube channel so don't forget to subscribe to this channel so please do subscribe and one more thing is we are also providing this google a review link in youtube channel that is in the video description so click on that give your valuable review about our institute thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our thoughts is academy